Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to give you a, a look at the image quality from the new Tamron 100 to 400 millimeter f4.5 to 6.3 DI VC USD. And, and so, of course, I, when we did the review back about five months ago of the new Sigma 100 to 400 millimeter contemporary lens, I was really kind of blown away by how how well the the lens held up optically to my much much more expensive about two and a half times as expensive a canon 100 to 400 millimeter l mark ii lens which is an awesome lens one of, of canon's best in that kind of category and uh, and so i was surprised at how well the sigma did and it pretty much held its own um, with a few minor exceptions uh, optically and so yeah, i was very impressed but as a, as a byproduct of that of course my expectations for this tamron shifted in that um, sigma showed what is possible at that kind of price point and with that kind of lens so the question is is that can tamron do as good a job optically and then of course in a subsequent episode we're going to explore if Tamron was able to best Sigma's performance when it comes to autofocus, you know, kind of tracking um, for sports use and wildlife birding, because that's where, uh, you know, the Sigma kind of stumbled a little bit and that I felt like it just wasn't as good in keeping up with uh, kind of fast moving action. You know, and that's the kind of thing that a lot of people want this kind of lens for. But today we're going to look a little bit more carefully at the actual image quality. And we'll look at things like resolution, uh, color rendition, the bokeh quality, uh, quality. We'll look at flare resistance, chromatic aberration control, all of those things. So let's jump in. Let's take a look at some images and see what we find. So here we're going to start by doing a comparison of the Canon here on the left and the Tamron here on the right. And so this is at 100 millimeters and unlike our comparison to the Sigma, we can compare both of these at f4.5 um, due to the fact that, you know, they both uh, open up their aperture to f4.5. Looking at the images globally, you can see that really uh, there's more similarity than difference here in terms of contrast and in terms of uh, color rendition. The images look quite similar. They both look excellent. So uh, taking a look here in the center of the frame, um, I would say that we see maybe a minute better amount of contrast for the Canon right in the very center. However, if we drop down a little bit here off center, we can see that our uh, detail is just as good here on the Tamron. And so really they're more similar than different here. Moving off towards the edge of the frame shows a, a similar story that really the image quality here looks highly similar and uh, there's not really a lot of variation between the two. Take a look at this uh, other side as well. And you know, both of them are really delivering an excellent, consistent performance across the frame, but the Tamron really is every bit as good. And you know, here towards the edge of the frame, I would say looking at this particular knot that I actually like the uh, Tamron result a bit better. So, you know, impressive. If we stop these lenses down to f5.6, we would expect them to look even better. And, you know, I think that they do. The image quality is so good wide open that there's not a huge um, improvement to be seen stopping down to f5.6. However, both of them look really excellent, you know, across the frame. I mean, this is, this is a, a very strong uh, performance here. Both of these lenses are very sharp, but the, the Tamron is certainly no less sharp than what the Canon is. And, um, you know, looking at this area once again, you know, both of them look you know, pretty much equally good. Very strong. Stopped all the way down to f8. Um, here, I, I think that I just very, very, very slightly prefer what I see from the uh, Canon there in the very center of the frame. And uh, just seems to be a little bit better contrast. Of course, they, they didn't expose perfectly the same, and so that could explain uh, that. They meter just slightly different, but uh, you know, both of, the, both of them look really, really excellent here. Let's just take a look at a different spot for the fun of it. And, and down here again, you know, it's the result is is really it's pretty much the same. Now here, uh, looking at 200 millimeters, first thing to note is that here we see the first advantage here for the Canon lens that it is still at f5. This lens does a fantastic job of keeping the aperture, you know, staying towards a wider aperture compared to the third-party lenses. 
very true in comparison to the Sigma, a little bit less to the Tamron, but even so, here we see that the, the Tamron is a, a, just a little bit slower, um, a third of a stop slower here, F5.6, as opposed to F5. Now, uh, once again, looking here, we see that they they look more similar than different. But looking at this area here, you know, for example, on this nail head here, I mean, both of these are looking really exceptional. At 200 millimeters, once again, we have a performance that is highly similar with you know both of them kind of at their their maximum aperture at this point sharpness at 200 millimeters is just right out to the edge on both of them a really a strong exceptional looking performance from both of these lenses and so you know a lot to be applauded there so if we uh, stop down the Canon to where it's now at f5.6 compared to the Tamron here on the right, I think that the Canon shows a bit of a boost in contrast, just a little bit more contrast punch than what the Tamron does. Uh, the actual resolution looks pretty much the same, but I think the micro contrast uh, comparison favors the, uh, you know, the Canon ever so slightly less true towards the edge of the frame where the uh, Tamron is showing, you know, just as much uh, contrast and, you know, it looks, looks really great here out at the edge of the frame. Stopping both lenses down to f8. Once again, um, and again, this, this could be a little bit difference of exposure here. It seems like the Canon has a little bit more contrast Resolution looks uh, pretty similar once again at the center of the frame between the two lenses looking up to the very you know edges of the frame. They look um, you look very similar. There's just a little bit higher contrast for the Canon lens from what I can tell. But if you look at you know some of these areas of detail, it's not actually rendering any more detail than what the Tamron lens is. It just shows up a little bit um, just a little bit more contrast. That's less true, however, as we get towards the edges of the frame, as we can see here. But here at the very edge, I mean, from both lenses, our performance is really quite fantastic. So here at 300 millimeters, we actually see the single greatest maximum aperture advantage of the uh, the Canon over the Tamron lens here, and that at this stage we are we're very close to we're we're more like two thirds stop difference between the two lenses, and so that's about as significant as what you're going to see. And so as you can see, you definitely need um, less you know shutter speed or to achieve you know a similar kind of lighting result here. In terms of comparing the overall kind of um, resolution contrast here. Once again, I do think that the Canon exhibits slightly more contrast uh, at the very center of the frame. Resolution, once again, looks very similar. And if we kind of move out towards the periphery, we see that the, the same is true. Looking off towards this edge, we can see that the um, you know, I, I, it's a little bit warmer rendition from the Canon compared to the Tamron, but they look they look highly similar. And you'll note that here at 300 millimeters, really uh, neither lens is showing a whole lot of vignette here, even though they're both wide open. Both of them sharp right out to the edges of the frame. Once again, I, I mean, I'm just really impressed by what both of these lenses and how sharp they actually are. So if we stop the lenses down uh, now to f8, I do think that the uh, the Canon is given a little bit stronger performance here. And uh, my experience is 300 millimeters is maybe the weakest point in the Tamron range. But I mean, that being said, it's <laughs> if that's weak, it's a really fantastic week. Um, it's, it's still very, very similar to the performance of the Canon. And again, uh, you know, it's been kind of a recent Canon or Tamron hallmark, but it's delivering really consistent, you know, image quality across the frame. And, and so out towards the edge of the frame, the, you know, the Canon advantage is, is minimal at best. And once again, it seems to be just a little bit better contrast for the Canon lens and uh, not so much a resolution advantage. So finally, if we hit 400 millimeters here, um, once again, you know, the, the Canon now has, you know, the max aperture is closed a little bit to it's at f5.6. The Tamron, of course, has remained at f6.3. Um, but as far as their actual resolution, here they look 
very very similar of course the the tamron is you know it's it's a little bit larger image at 400 millimeters the focus breathing of the canon is showing up a bit more and so this is occupying a bit more of the frame here contrast still looks really excellent from the canon lens but resolution looks very very similar and you can see you know the framing has tightened up here to where we've kind of lost this area on the, uh, the the Canon or the Tamron lens, but you can see that both of them, you know, there's a little bit difference in their color rendition, but both of them are extremely sharp right out to the edges of the frame. Now here I do see a little bit more vignette um, affecting the, uh, the Tamron lens as opposed to the Canon lens, very low vignette performance. And so that's obscuring the detail a little bit, but you can see that in this area here, actually the Tamron is handling these textures better and if we move up towards this corner, for example, you'll see that the, the Tamron is actually the sharper lens um, out at the edge of the frame. And, and so, of course, that's a, uh, an impressive performance there as well. Comparing them both at f8 shows that, in my eye, the Tamron actually has the advantage in terms of absolute resolution here at 400 millimeters. Um, which is of course in incredibly important. So stop down to F8. The Tamron has definitely gained uh, some sharpness there um, in the center of the frame. Uh, and you know, here towards the edge of the frame, it's still not, of course the, the Canon had lower vignette to begin with and better light transmission. And so the, uh, the Tamron um, is showing a little bit of an effect from that. But in terms of the actual resolution, as we can see, it's, it's really strong. And, and that's true on both sides of the frame. The Canon seems to be a little stronger on the right side than it is on the left side. The Tamron is pretty consistent on both sides of the frame. Now what happens if you compare the Tamron 70 to 200 um, G2 lens with a 1.4 times teleconverter? And so this is a Canon uh, TC that's attached and so it doesn't report properly anywhere here. Shows the aperture here is f5.6, it's actually f Four. Um, it shows you know a two times instead of the 1.4 times. It also shows that it's 400 millimeters when in fact it's 280 millimeters. As you can clear, clearly see, the magnification is quite a bit higher here on the um, 100 to 400 millimeter lens. Now, if we compare the resolution of the two we can see that the native lens is a little bit sharper in the center of the frame. But you can see that certainly this new uh, lens is the sharper of the two when you compare it like that. I'll give you an apples to apples comparison. So we can see this is a little closer comparison. Again, it's showing F8, but that doesn't render correctly. It's actually F5.6 um, due to the communication issues between the Canon or teleconverter and the Tamron lens. So we see now that the image quality is a little bit more equalized, but still, um, even with that combination stopped down to basically equivalent aperture, you can see we've got similar shutter speed here that the, um, you know, toward, particularly as we get towards the edge of the frame, the 100 to 400 is still the sharper combination. And so once again, uh, if you're shooting the actual Canon 70 to 200, L Mark II um, IS lens, you'll find that it does really well with TCs. The Tamron lens does okay, but not exceptional. Of course, I am using a Canon TC instead of a Tamron one uh, for this comparison, but you're gonna find that the native lens is going to outperform the, the G2 lens um, with an adapter attached. Now one final comparison for the fun of it, and this is not an apples to apples comparison. Um, while it's the same wall that I've shot here, it's shot obviously at different focus distances under different lighting conditions, but this is as good as what I can do without having the Sigma um, on hand. This is a Sigma 100 to 400 contemporary lens. And so we can, you know, while they're not gonna frame identically, you can take a look here, uh, just comparing the two. And again, I'm not going to dwell on this too much because it's not really entirely a fair comparison. But you, what you can tell uh, from this comparison is that certainly the, uh, the Tamron lens is a little less affected by, you know, kind of some haze wide open. And so um, it's definitely providing a little bit more punch uh, at 400 millimeters wide open. And so of course that's, you know, that's a very important metric there. So, you know, a good job here from this Tamron lens. So let's take a look at the extremes here. Uh, this is, you know, a handheld real world result um, shot, you know, not, 
may if not at minimum focus distance very very close to it we can see that the lens resolves very nicely this is wide open so you can see the depth of field is really shallow here but um, you can see that number one there's a lot of magnification there and uh, it's rendering a lot of this fine detail very well i mean not as good as a dedicated macro lens but if you don't own a macro lens and uh, you want to do some macro type shots i mean that's that's a pretty impressive result now if we go out to the other extreme um, towards infinity uh, this is a handheld result but you can see that you know the lens has nice resolution into the distance we see that kind of even um, you know, kind of sharpness profile across the frame. And so you can see the some effects of haze uh, from the distance that is there, the various, you know, air waves that are go going across the water. But I mean, really there is great detail that's all across that frame that's rendered there. And so here, you know, shooting from a distance, you know, we have detail in the foreground, we have detail in the middle here, and then detail into the background. So I, I see no reason why this can't be a, an interesting landscape lens for a different look at images. Flare resistance wide open, you can see that there is some veiling that takes place near the epicenter of the sun. However, most of the frame uh, contrast is holding up, no big artifacts from ghosting. Stopping down a bit, we see a really a similar result. And so contrast away from the actual event of the sun looks okay. Um, and no really bad kind of ghosting blobs there. Now, looking at the bokeh quality here, number one, I mean, that's that, that kind of blew my mind when I zoomed in on that image to see how much detail is there on that leaf that, you know, I wouldn't even know that's an apple leaf there. And so, I mean, that's, that's really cool how much detail is rendered. We can see uh, that obviously a 400 millimeter focal length is going to really strongly defocus background. So a lot of cream there. Uh, here, this is just really to give us a look at how low the chromatic aberration is. And so I shot this branch against a, you know, completely blown out sky. This is a very high transition area. And this is a hotbed for green purple fringing. And it just is not there at all, not even a little bit. And when I shot another kind of torture test, you know, where there is um, here, there's a lot of potential for, for chromatic aberration, you know, both in these kind of shiny surfaces, the transition going to a, a defocused area. I mean, really, this is, I mean, this is pretty much as close to perfect of a chroma, uh, chromatic aberration control as what I've seen. And of course, as you can see, the, um, the amount of detail that's rendered here is fantastic at 400 millimeters uh, wide open. Very sharp, very, very nice result. Looking at the bokeh quality a little bit more here, we can see you know varying uh, degrees of defocus here. That's a very nice looking uh, result there. Uh, I mean, I, I think that there's nothing I've seen that is discouraging in that. Here's another type result, and obviously here a strongly defocused background for the most part, but you see these areas here where you have other objects that could become busy and really just are not doing so. I thought it'd be interesting here too to look at a comparison between the Canon lens on the left and the Tamron on the right. And so I shot this under identical conditions, um, uh, just a, a few minutes apart. So one thing you can see, of course, is that even at a distance of about 50 feet, the, uh, the Tamron is framing considerably tighter than what the Canon lens is. And so the Canon really isn't a true 400 millimeters, unfortunately, until you basically get out to infinity. Uh, focus breeze, you know, kind of all along the way. But let's just look at areas like this here. And so we can see that, you know, the both lenses do a nice job. I do think that the Canon is a little less busy in this area. Uh, not that the Tamron looks result looks bad, but it looks fine. But just, you know, compare it at a pixel level, you can see that there are less, maybe uh, hard edges than what there is on the Tamron. Uh, that's about as close you're going to get to betraying the superior optical quality of the, the Canon because for the most part, the result looks really, really identical. And so, I mean, you know, which one of these is the is the $2,000 plus lens, which of these is the $799 lens. I mean, it's, you know, frankly, it's, <laughs> you're not going to see a big, a big difference between the two. I mean, look at very, very sharp there, actually a little bit sharper maybe than what the, the Canon result is. And so, I mean, I don't know, there's, there's very little to I me mean, for me to look at and say, here's, here's the better lens. 
One final image, just because I thought it was kind of cool here, but it's it's a really, really high contrast going from very bright LED lights and this um, lamp, lamp post here to a very dark area during a snowstorm. So, you know, obviously there's potential for kind of blowout areas and things that look a little bit, you know, nasty here. But uh, we can see that this lens has delivered really, this is at higher ISO, so there's a little bit of you know, pixel noise there. But in terms of what the lens itself is doing, it's, it's really impressive. It's a surprisingly sophisticated result for the price point that it's at. So as you can see, um, I'm not really shocked this time by this result because as I said, Sigma showed that it could be done, but I, you know, needless to say, I am impressed by how good the optics are in this Tamron lens. And so once again, we see that the light transmission um, isn't quite as good. You know, it does terminate in a 67 millimeter, uh, you know, front filter um, as opposed to a 77 millimeter. And so, you know, the, the Canon is a much heavier lens and it's you know thicker around in girth so there's more kind of light moving through there in terms of the glass but you know Tamron has managed to kind of straddle between the excellence of the Canon in that regard and the performance of the Sigma which is slower even you know at the maximum aperture on the wide end and also is is pretty much a you know a, a half stop to a third stop behind the uh, Tamron throughout a a chunk of the range there so Tamron does a little bit better job of keeping up that you know, a little bit closer in terms of light transmission. But of course it does an exceptional job in delivering really just as much um, sharpness and contrast and punch as the Canon does. And particularly along the edges of the frame, the, uh, the Tamron, and that's kind of become a Tam Tamron signature as of late. They're doing a great job of delivering really consistent results across the frame. And, and so for some people that, that's a big deal because of the way that they compose. For other people it's less of a big deal because they tend to compose with their subject mostly towards the center of the frame. So depending on what kind of photographer you are, that may be a big deal, it may not be a big deal, but it's nice to see that they're delivering really consistent um, image quality there. And of course we saw that really on all of the metrics the Tamron does a pretty good job. Flare resistance is, is good. Um, very low, next to no chromatic aberration. The bokeh quality is good. And so all of that is, is very impressive. Now we're going to see in our next episode what, how well it compares to the Canon when it comes to the autofocus performance and the tracking speed. And so we'll see that next time around. In the meantime, take a look in the description down below to see more images that will be a part of my uh, review process here. I'll also throw a link if you would like to take a look at a quick review that I've already done for Photo News Magazine here in, in, uh, in Canada. You can see the link to that along with some images that I've taken as a part of that. And of course you can follow me there on social media. There are buying links if you want to get your pre-order in. And as some of you may have noticed, um, some of the Amazon links are not fully functional yet. Amazon, because it's not a dedicated photography company, it can be a little bit slower than say B&H or Adorama in um, getting brand new products linked up there. But don't worry, um, those links, they will be active as soon as uh, Amazon gets their listing in place and some stock there for pre-order. Um, and of course, if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button today. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.